what's even more extraordinary is they all came back and worked and lived and built their career right in their hometown, McFarland. So one of the things we want you to take away from this event today is thinking about your future, thinking about your community, which is why we're here. Uh, and I really want to make light of the, the fastest runner. Remember his name? Thomas Valles? Yeah, he's, uh, he's now a teacher back in McFarland. But what's really extraordinary is the actor who played him, Carlos Prats, it has his own great story. And it is my incredible pleasure to introduce to you guys, all the way from California, Carlos Prats. How's it going? Hey, um, first off, happy Thanksgiving week, yeah? All right. And um, thank you all so much for, uh, for having me here. It's my first time seeing snow, so I'm really adjusting to all this. And I'm a little cold, and earlier I was this close to making a snow angel, and I chickened out, so my seven-year-old Carlos is not happy with me at this moment. Um, but yeah, thank you all for being here. I think I want to start off with uh, what we just saw. And uh, it wasn't what I planned to speak about, but I think it's so important. So we see um, Thomas crossing the finish line, right? Like that race. And um, it's him and the Palo Alto runner. And Thomas beats him by a knee. Now, if it wasn't for all of the, um, all the months training that they did with Coach White and uh, the, the eating right and the, and the working out and doing the right thing, Thomas wouldn't have been able to beat him by a knee. Well, what's pretty cool about that was that me training for this film, I wasn't really a runner before, right? Like I ran, but it was never like this, you know, not like these guys. So when we did that scene, we were uh, running against real runners. So the way we were gonna do it was kind of the Hollywood way where um, it's like, I go like 70%, you go 60 and we make it work. So we rehearsed it. And then uh, right before we shot it, the, uh, the trainer came up to me and the other runner and he said, go 100%. If it doesn't work out, it's fine, because we get to do it again. But just go 100%, let's just see what happens. And, um, and that's what we did. And what you guys saw when I crossed that line was actually me crossing that line and getting there by an inch. And I say that because if it wasn't for all of the hard work that I put in, training, getting ready for, for this film, um, and all the times where like I wanted to cheat on my diet and eat Chipotle or, or not do that extra rep, I wouldn't have been able to do that. And I think what's so important to that is for each of you to know your own power. And I know that sometimes we, um, we put in the work, but it feels like, man, we're not gonna get anywhere. Oh, why am I doing this? Well, it's for that. Because what happens is when you least expect it, you're like, wow, it paid off. So uh, that was really important for me, and I was kind of just hoping that that would resonate with you all. Um, so from that, uh, I just want to talk about some cool things uh, as far as you know, life and community. And like the seven runners of McFarland, they, um, they all came back. You know, They left, they went, they learned, they studied abroad. They grew as individuals, and um, everything that they, that they took with them, they thought it was so important to be grateful for what they had learned and bring it back to those who haven't learned it or aren't even born yet and will not learn it unless these guys bring it back to that community. So they came back to continue the, um, the giving of what Coach White gave to them and knew that it was important for them to give back. Because essentially that's what we are. We're community, we're family, um, if I meet you here uh, like this, yes, if I meet you in California, I will never met you, but I will always want the best for you. And um, I think that's really important in the way that we go about life. Because you see, I mean, there are many times that we'll, um, we'll kind of think that we're really special, right? And we are. We are each uniquely special. But what makes you special, or you special, or me special, is from knowing that everyone else around you is so special and treating each of you as that way from, your, from the heart because not many people do that. See, we live in a world where there's gonna be so many people that are putting out 
a light of negative energy, which isn't even light, it's darkness. And it's up to us individually to, uh, to continue that positive light because it's gonna, the, the negative light's gonna be there. So let's bring as much of that positive light as we can. Um, thank you. Thank you guys. Um, and so from that, I, um, about that positive light, I think what helps people stay there, and this is a, a beautiful quote that, uh, that my mother told me, and it's, uh, it's from Maya Angelou. And it's, uh, if you must look to the past, do so forgivingly. If you must look to the future, do so prayerfully. But most importantly, while you're in the present, you must be present gratefully. Um, and when I heard that, it really resonated because there's, there was a lot in my life that I'm sure for a long time th things happened and I was like, well, that couldn't have been my fault. And I was waiting on, on them to tell me that they were sorry. Or if I did something wrong and was like, you know what, I already moved on, so there's no reason for me to say that I'm sorry. Um, but by looking at it in a forgiving way, it's like, I'm sorry, and I, I just, I forgive the past, because if I, if I live in a past of resentment, or I hold resentment, or someone holds resentment on me, and we stay there, then I'm just going to do exactly that, and I'm going to stay there. I'm going to stay in that light of resentment. So I think that's where living, living to the past forgivingly. And if you look to the future prayerfully, that's just saying, let's just move forward. Let's be positive, and let's send the best out there that we can because that's really all that we have. And when you're in the present, just be grateful for everything that's in front of you. Be grateful for each other. Grateful for movies like McFarland. You know, be grateful for for life because it's all we got and we get to choose uh, how we're gonna go about today, which is the best part about what we do. Um, thank you. I wasn't expecting that, but thank you. <laughs> um, so yeah, again, member choice is always up to us. Um, so the woman that told me that quote was, uh, was my mother, as I said, and, um, and she's probably one of the most strong, beautiful, incredible women I will ever meet. I know she is that I have ever met today, but maybe one day I'll meet another person like that and maybe she'll become my wife. You know, who knows? But um, my mother, she came to the United States when she was 17. She came by herself, she was scared, didn't have much, didn't speak great English, um, but she, she knew she could do it because she just knew that she could because we can. You know, everything that we need comes from within, and I think my mother really knew that more than probably most of our family. And so she came to the States and she said, I'm gonna make something of myself. And she started to, you know, she went to college, uh, started learning the language, started working three jobs, and kept pushing. And then she had me at 21. And for a long time, it was just me and my mom. And she never gave up, even when times were tough, even when it was like, I don't know how much longer I can do this. She knew that she could, and she kept going. And I saw that my entire life. I saw a woman that was stronger than, than any man or any person I, I'd ever seen. And um, she taught me a lot. And today, my mother, is uh, she's gone from working the job at Jack in a Box to being the librarian, to the cafeteria lady, to uh, second grade teacher, to third grade teacher, to principal, to um, the president of CABE, which is the uh, Texas a a uh, Assessment for Bilingual Educators, to a proud mother of two, me and my little brother, and an amazing wife, to an amazing stepfather. So everything I learned in life about strength and that I can do has come from my mother, um, and I'm very grateful for that. Thank you. And um, so from that, I, um, she gave me the strength to take on this journey of, uh, of chasing my dreams. And, uh, and my dream was to become an actor. And um, when I first found acting, I didn't know that it was my dream. It was just something that felt really good. It was like, wow, this is awesome. You know, because again, I, I grew up with a single mom. So for a large part of my life, not knowing uh, I was like, I want people to leave me or not leave me like my father did. You know, so I was constantly in the state where it's like, let me just make sure that I do whatever so they don't leave me. Um, and then I found acting and it was like, wow, no one's leaving me. They're actually coming in. They're enjoying me. They want me to act more, you know? And it was a really safe place. 
And, um, and, and I took that and I ran, literally, pun intended, I ran. Um, but I took that and, um, and I fell in love with it. And then I, uh, I went to college and I made a choice in my life and I was like, you know what, I think, I think maybe I should do the safe route and do business. And not that I couldn't do acting, it was just, this just felt like the safe route that I could do. And then I caught that bug again. And, um, and I said, all right, cool, I'm going to go. I'm going to go chase this dream that is, you know, acting, Hollywood, all that, that cool stuff. And right before I left, I, um, I got the most beautiful call, and it was that I was about to be a big brother. Um, and my mom and my dad adopted my, uh, my little brother, Louis. And it was incredible. So now, like, before I was going to Hollywood for me, right? But, uh, but now I'm like, wow, I'm going because, A, this is for me, but I know one day that kid is going to need something from me. So I really got to make this work. Otherwise, you know, be screwed. <laughs> but um, no, he's not. Um, but no, so I went to Hollywood with that, that extra fire. And, um, and it wasn't easy, you know? I, I went there and I, I had $2,350. And I was like, that's going to be more than enough. And it was gone in, in 30 days, swear to God, all gone. Um, and, I, uh, and I was like, that's OK. I'm going to figure it out. Because my mother had taught me that I could figure this out. So I moved there and I started asking questions and I was like, well, hey, what do I do? Someone said, go to this acting class. And I was like, yes. I even read a book and it was like, um, hey, if you want to be an actor, go to a public place and sing. And I did. I can't sing, but I did. It's like, if you told me this is what it takes to be an actor, I was going to do it. Because I just had that drive. You know, I was, I was fearless. And um, so I started doing it. And I started getting jobs, non-paying jobs, but I started getting that experience. And then I started waiting tables. And then I started facing new obstacles where I was like, okay, I really want this dream and I know I can do it, but man, I don't know if I can do this dream if I can't pay my bills. You know, it's, it's really, really hard. But again, my mom said, yes, you can. And, um, you know, you will find a way. And even if she wasn't directly saying it, she said it my whole life because I saw it in her. So I kept going. And, um, and eventually I, I moved past one obstacle and um, so paying bills wasn't that hard because I got a commercial. And then that commercial helped me get this, right? So now I'm, I'm trying to navigate. I'm trying to grow. Um, but I'm not necessarily doing what I love yet. And that's difficult because I haven't figured that out yet. So then I, um, I'm like, well, I need to get a, a good theatrical agent. And I'm like, all right, cool. This money that I have, that I've made from commercials, that's helped me pay my bills, I can do this to go meet an agent or a manager. And, um, and not like meet, not like pay, hey, represent me. It was like I could pay to go to places where I could read for 20 or 30 people, and maybe one of them would be interested in repping me. And I did that for like a year. And I was out of money. I was just done. Um, and I just looked up, and I was like, God, this isn't going to work. <laughs> I need a new route. Um, I'm going to make it work, but I get it. This route isn't the way to go. And I got a phone call later that day, and it was um, from my friend Jenna. And she said to me, hey, I have this uh, agent manager workshop today, and I need a partner. My partner bailed. Will you, um, will you come with me? And I was like, sure. Why not? I'll do one more. Why not? And I did it, and that's where I met the agent that started to open up every door. And from that, from that point on, I moved on to the next place where it was like, all right, cool. Now I'm getting the auditions for like the big shows, but man, I can't book the job. You know, I'm like, what do I do? I just know that I can't stop. I got to keep going. Because see, someone else had already proved to me that making it in Hollywood could happen because I've seen so many people do it. So I knew that nothing separated me from them just like nothing separates me from any of you. I knew that it was possible. So I said, I'm going to keep going. And eventually I got one job. And I had one line on a TV show called Justified. And I was so nervous. And um, I messed up, and that's OK. But uh, it was. I was like, all right, cool, I'm on TV, I'm doing this. So then, you know, from then on, I kept auditioning, and I would get a small part here or a small part here. And what ended up happening was this, uh, this casting director called me, and she'd read me so many times, and she said, Carlos, uh, I've been looking at your resume, and I'm trying to figure out why you haven't worked more. And I get it. It's your diction. I was like, whoa, 
That's it? And she's like, yeah. And then I just started working. And the reason I bring that up is because I had been, like, I thought that I was doing everything that I could to move forward, right? I was like, wow, this is it. I'm literally doing everything. The acting class, the, the workshops, you know, everything that they say to do, do, except the one thing that was just inside me that I hadn't looked in. I was looking everywhere else for the answers, but I hadn't looked inside for the answers. And that was something so simple. And, um, and from that point on, my career changed. And I got to be here. You know, I, I got to be right there with Kevin Costner. And, um, and what ended up happening was, was that I started to ask a lot of real questions you know, about myself. And, it all, and, I, and I, um, I found success, but it wasn't in the way that I thought I was going to find it. And what ended up happening, as I said, I, I asked the question, am I happy? And yeah, I was happy doing what I loved. But see, my whole life, I was uh, constantly trying to prove to my dad, who I, was, who I never met and was never going to meet, that I was enough. And it wasn't until I looked at where I was, I looked at the people that worked with me, I looked at my friends, I looked at my mom, I looked at everyone else, is that I realized that I am enough and um, that I had the love. I just didn't know where to look for it. And that moment kind of changed my life. And I just hope that that helps you all, you know, and whatever it is that you choose to do. Because literally, I'm looking at a room full of awesome people that can do whatever you want. It's amazing. You know, it's 2016, and you are the future. You guys want to go up there and act? You can. You want to teach? You can. You want to be a professor? You can. You just have to always remember that you can. All right, because everything you need, again, comes from within. And if I can bring it back to anything, it's going to be back to Maya Angelou. Look to the past forgivingly, the future prayerfully, and the present gratefully, because you are enough and continue to bring that to everyone that you come across. And just like the runners from McFarland, like they went as far as they could go, you all can go as far as you want to go. Just remember, you tell your legs when to stop. So I beg you, please don't ever tell them to stop and just keep going. Thank you. It's hot up here. Jesus. Any questions? So we had one question that was asked in the back earlier. Can you tell us about Thomas Dallas' story a little bit? Oh, yeah. Uh, who asked the question? Raise your hand. Okay. Thank you. It's an awesome question. Um, Thomas, Thomas is awesome. You know, Thomas works in McFarland today. Uh, he works in the schools. He, um, he was one of the, those seven runners were the first people to uh, leave their town and leave on a Division I scholarship. Um, and Thomas, he didn't have to go back. You know, once Thomas got out, I don't think he wanted to go back because growing up in McFarland was hard. You know, you saw his life. That, that whole bridge story, that was real. You know, him sitting on that bridge, I don't know if exactly what we said was exactly what was said between him and Coach White, but I know that at that night he thought he was going to kill himself. And... Um, yeah, and it wasn't until he had someone like Coach White that told him that he was enough that he started to believe that he was enough. He went on. He um, got really good at running. He did date Julie, just so y'all know. Um, and then he went to college. They, they're no longer together, but, um, <laughs> but they're still very good friends. Um, he went to college, and, he, you know, he just he traveled. And then eventually it was like, I'm going to come back. I want to raise my family in my home and make a difference where it matters most, my home. So, yeah. Okay. One last question. One last question. How was your relationship with the fellow actors you acted with? Uh, those guys are awesome, by the way. Thank you. Um, they're great. Hector is always smiling. He played uh, Johnny, the one that puts the team together. 
Um, Ramiro is Danny Diaz, who I'm sure we all love. Um, he's great. He, uh, I mean, literally, we're all family. I could go down the list. As a matter of fact, uh, the guy that plays Victor is going to be moving to Los Angeles because he lives in McFarland. Um, and he's going to be rooming with me for a couple months until he gets on his feet in January. So we're all really, just really close friends. Johnny Ortiz, who plays uh, uh, Jose, the guy who burns out at the end of the race, he's doing incredible things right now. Uh, a couple of different TV shows. He's, um, he's just got a great heart. He's always calling me saying, hey, man, we're going to do this. He likes to call me Papa. <laughs> um, but he's just got a great heart, just reaches out. Um, and yeah, literally, we're family. You know, if if any one of us needs anything at any moment, we're always there. And you know, it's a brotherhood that we'll have forever. So, yeah. All right. Can I take a question from the audience? Just one random question. Okay. Where? So raised. Yeah, red shirt. What's up, buddy? <laughs> what kind of car do I drive? A Prius. I'm eco-friendly. <laughs> okay. Okay, one more question. Uh, let's get it from a girl, right? Okay, right here. How old am I? I am 30. I am 30 years old. Yep, thank you. I know it breaks my heart every time I say it too. Yeah. That was a buzz kill. Okay. All right, sorry about my brother. Uh, all right, you guys want to hear something cool? All right, so kind of like, you know, my mom worked so hard for me and she taught me all that. I um, And my little brother came in my life and I just really wanted to make something better for him. Well, because of this film and other projects I've done, my little brother has started to get a little bit of a following on Instagram. And, um, and I got a crazy phone call from people at Disney and they were like, hey, we, uh, we have this role that is, um, we're having a really hard time casting. And um, we kind of want to see your brother audition. So just happen out of nowhere, but send all the positive energy that you can, because my brother might do a movie now, you know? <laughs> so <laughs> send that energy. So, yeah. All right. all right, well, thank you guys so much. Thank you. How about a big round of applause for Carlos Prats? Thank you. Hey man, how's it going? How are you doing? Good work. It's always a pleasure, man. Okay, many of you have to get on the bus and go back and start celebrating a nice long Thanksgiving weekend, but we have one last quick surprise. I have Carter Banks here from the Utica Comets. Come on, Carlos. Thank you very much for having me today, guys. Uh, the Comets are proud to call Utica our home and we hope you feel that same way too. The love and support we've been shown here over the last few years is something that's truly remarkable. We encourage you to take pride in your community and get in as, as involved in it as you can. The Comets do everything we can to give back to this community that supports our team and our dreams day in and day out. This is our first stop of the day. After, we'll be heading over to deliver some turkeys to some families in need this holiday season. We encourage you guys to continue to work hard in school and follow your dreams and have great pride in this beautiful community that we get to call home. Thank you very much and uh, enjoy seeing my friends on the way out. As you leave, guys, take a look in the back. We have the whole Utica Comets team there to say happy Thanksgiving. Have a great Thanksgiving. Gloves all fight night. Here comes the hurricane, my soul switch. 
Afraid of it, stand up and take my hand. City of school, that's right.